Okay, my good friends, it's Roger once again. A little brain teaser for you today. If you've been paying attention, everybody's saying that we need new physics. The Bohr model doesn't work. They're finding all kinds of things that don't add up. And I am showing that electron flood theory covers 100% of all the issues that they can't figure out, all the mysteries, <laughs> which the current unknown mysteries are gravity. They don't know where light is a particle or a wave or what it is. Space is they could still consider it to be a vacuum. Well, where does the light go? You know, what, 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 where does the light from from the sun go? They don't understand what heat is. <laughs> now we're going to be talking about heat today, and I put in: Does heat add weight? Yes. If you have absolutely identical objects that have the same weight exactly when they are at the same temperature then when one object is heated, it will weigh more. When it gets hot, it weighs more. Temperature differences means that there is a different amount of kinetic energy in the motion of the atoms of the two bodies. What, what's that mean? If the, this, the, the same number of atoms in the same bodies, then they should weigh the same. I don't care if they're bouncing around inside or not. If it's just sitting there, not moving, and pump, pumping up and down, how could it weigh more? What is the extra weight? Where does it come from? All right, this is what we're going to have to decide. And electron flood theory makes it extremely obvious how it happens. Now, I'm going to tell you a story that goes back long, long ago. I was in the electronics business, and one of the things we had were weigh scales, scales that had to weigh exactly precise amounts. And we had to get the, the, the weights calibrated every, I don't know, every year or two, I forget. But we had to go to the weights and measures department and they took them in and they weighed them. They had a special machine. They put them on there and weigh them and verify that this weighed a gram, this weighed an ounce or whatever it was. And they had a, we had a whole set of them. And they had to be exactly perfect because they were for, for legal trade where you weigh things on scales and supermarkets and so forth. Now, so I go up there with the scale, with the weights, and it was winter time, and I had left them in the car overnight, and I brought them in, and I said, "Go, can you weigh them?" I, I'm kind of in a hurry, you know. Could you do it now? And the guy said, "No, you have to leave them." I said, "Oh, okay." I said, "You backed up." And I said, "No, I just you can't do them when they're cold." I said, "Why can't you do them when they're cold?" He said, "They don't weigh right." <laughs> And of course, the way I am, I said, well, come on, why don't they weigh right? He said, well, nobody knows, but they don't weigh right. He says, we think it's because the, the cold air is falling off them, and it does something to... Anyway, so anyway, we had to leave it at that, and, and I had to wait a day and go back and pick them up the next day, because they had to get into room temperature. Everything had to be the same temperature in order for them to weigh correctly. And they they called load cells, and we had to calibrate them. And then you put the weight on this, the the platter, and then you put little codes in it. You calibrate, and it would lock in and say, okay, anytime this much weight is on there, it weighs a pound or whatever it was. So, and that's we had to certify the scales. So. This goes back a long time. Everybody knows that the weight. Now, everybody assumes you heat something up, it goes up in the air. Well, that's only when gases expand. You have the same number of molecules in the gases, but they take up a bigger space, they go up in the air. Totally different situation. You have the same space is occupied by more heat. Well, heat obviously has to be a particle. If it weighs more, something's going in there. It's not just it bounces around inside there. Something went in there and it's excess in there, and it has a weight, and it is electrons, extra electrons. That's all electrons are is heat. Now, you think about that for a while, and we'll come back to this after you contemplate it. And I'd love to be able to do live on this to talk about it, because electron flood theory says there is nothing but electrons, 100% electrons, and they are all dipoles. One side of it is the electron, the other is what they call a muon. Never seen it before, it's dark matter. I show these. I show them. I show the electron showers, which is exactly what CERN wants to see. Electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos turn into electron showers, and the muon stays the same, but it is dark matter and it is gravity. It accounts for all the things they cannot account for.
And this right here is the proof for electron flood theory. All we did was took a red laser, pulsed, bip, 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 shot it through a venturi, and the explosion happened here. Particles separated. We had fission here, we had fusion back here, and we had explosive concussive energy there. That's my email. If anybody can help to pr pr bring this forward for to production or somebody development, contact me. This is the pulsed red laser without being accelerated. This is the acceleration phase and the particle which was right here at the tip of the wave is accelerated and concussed here. This is the particle. It is a black and white particle, back to back two of them. Each one is an electron. Singly they create electricity and sparks and lightning and all that. Together they bounce because they're semi-neutral. Now, when it hits the, the venturi here those black and ball black and white balls literally divide in two and that is called the muons the muon neutrino was the, the black ball which is still here the muon I mean the electron neutrino was a white ball which now is a shower which it is as it concusses the black one as it concusses stays a black ball is exactly what I am showing here. That is fission, the black and the white separated. That is fusion, they came back together. That is free energy. <coughs> Excuse me. We could do this literally within a couple of weeks. You could take five watts here, you get a thousand watts of energy over here by using that concussive value. And then we can filter it down into some kind of harvesting device. This is not an accurate diagram. It just shows you this is like a battery-ish looking thing. And that's just like a little motor sort of thing. And we can harvest it and run whatever we want with it. Once you've got increased from 5 to 1,000, that's 200 times. So, it, it, and, and we saw the particles. We saw the, we see them divide. And uh, I think it's time to look into this a little more closely.